more details of some of these projects uh, we are working on. Uh, basically, our strategy on AI, uh, our fighting against the digital divide, and our lab on, on 5G that we intend to launch uh, for the Mobile World Congress and will have uh, fully deployed uh, in in September. So uh, I'll be talking a little bit about these projects and some others uh, for the next uh, 10 minutes to give you an overview of, as I said before, what we're working on on this on this uh, uh, and this 2021. Um, I, I, and of course, you will see, and um, especially on some of the um, the projects I will mention, you will see the the impact of the of the COVID of the pandemic as we all have kind of accelerate our lives on the digital dimension. First of all, on strategy on AI, following the paths of Amsterdam, New York, and Helsinki, we, and some other cities, of course, uh, we have um, launched, we've been working for the last year on a, a strategy to develop the AI uh, in the city hall of Barcelona. It has two main goals. Uh, we're looking for two main goals. Uh, first of them would be how to provide public digital public services uh, with uh, this technology, with this AI technology. And the second one would be how to guarantee the ethical dimension, the, the rights, um, and especially the, the digital rights and human rights when we're using this technology. First of all, uh, combined with uh, more than, rather than big data, combined with good data, we intend to use the, the algorithms and the AI technology in order to pass from a reactive administration to a proactive administration. This means that uh, gathering all the data that we have uh, from our citizens, of course, with the consent, with the previous consent, and under the RGDP, uh, the, our regulation and the data protection, knowing the, our, our citizens, knowing their needs, knowing what they what they would like to hear from the administration, rather than wait, uh, rather than be waiting for them, for the citizens to come into our offices and ask for help or subsides or economic grants or whatever the idea is, I insist based with the combined good data and AI, be able to deliver them, be able to get in touch with them, be able to help them in order to, uh, in order so they, they can get benefit of these uh, grants or this helps or these public uh, digital services. We are based on the idea, some, some economic um, studies show us that up to 30% of the population uh, inside the EU uh, that don't get access to these uh, helps because they don't even know that they exist. So we're talking about 30% of the population that they don't even realize that they don't even know that they that they are uh, benefit that they could be benefits uh, from from these uh, public helps. So if we were able to locate them, if we were able to know that on previous years they asked for these grants, or if we if we can cross cut their their data and we know the the profiles, uh, the way that you you all may know the way Netflix sends us an email on Friday night uh, telling us which uh, TV show or which film we would like to know based on our uh, profile, that the same idea would work out uh, with the AI strategy we want to de develop. And the second one, and it's as important as the first one, is to guarantee the digital rights. And, and not only the digital rights, but the human rights, because we all know uh, how sometimes the use of this technology can uh, vulnerate or can discriminate uh, people uh, based on the data we have uh, collected. We all know what happened in, in UK with the A-levels that they, they were trying to, 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 to terminate these A-levels through the AI um, services and, and some other places that have uh, has happened. And we need to, as public administration, we need to be, of course, the first uh, that we need to guarantee this uh, protection of these, of these digital rights. Afterwards, Mark uh, Badia, We'll, we'll walk along with the, all the different measures uh, we have or we are trying to deploy in order to guarantee this this uh, uh, protection of, of the, the rights and fight against the discrimination when we're using technologies or rather whether they are emergency emerging technologies or 
or more traditional technologies. Second issue I'd like to talk, and, and I'll be very brief on this because Eduard Martin uh, from 5G, from mobile, uh, will be uh, talking about 5G. We are trying to launch a urban laboratory, uh, a real uh, urban laboratory based on 5G in our uh, innovation, urban innovation center uh, that's located in, in Calalie. It's a uh, public equipment where we develop different strategies on urban innovation. What we want is to create a condition, the real conditions, real uh, on, on a public space conditions. So anyone uh, being an enterprise, a startup, uh, an NGO, a research center who wants to test, who wants to do any pilot related to 5G, they can do it in a real environment, they can do it with cars, with people walking, with trees, with lamps, with traffic lights, uh, well, uh, what, what, what a real city is. So instead of, um, we want them to create the conditions so they can move from the laboratory to, to, real, to real life. We're also working now related to this elastic equipment I was talking about, uh, this is Center for Urban Innovation, along with Madrid, and Valencia and 10 other, other cities of, of Spain, we are, creating, we are creating the network for these uh, urban innovation centers in order to exchange all the knowledge and all the best practices we are doing all around uh, Spain, especially Valencia and Madrid, which more or less, we are more or less the same population. Uh, we've got a lot of things in, in common, but uh, we are also discovering through this network that there are a lot of good experiences in other cities that they might be smaller and they might not have as many as resources as Barcelona has, but even though the, 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 the innovation level is really good, so we are learning a lot from cities with 50,000 population or, or, or even less, or even less. As, um, as David was talking uh, on, 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 the, on the webinar before, uh, we are uh, as well just in the middle of the boat uh, of the budget participation process. Uh, we had a couple of pilots two years ago, and now we are developing this budget uh, participation process uh, in, 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 in the city, in the, in the whole city of Barcelona. We're talking about 30 million of euros to invest, uh, and they are going to be based not only uh, on whatever the citizens vote, but uh, especially they're going to, uh, this, this vote is going to be based on all the proposals that the same citizens made a couple of months ago. We've got like uh, around a thousand of these proposals. And I guess, my guess is they're pretty big. It's one of them. There are like 100,000, 200,000, even half a million, some of these investments. So I suppose we'll be, after the, the boat is closed, we'll be having like 50 or 100 projects that will be developed uh, for the next couple of, of years. And this is, as you, as you, some of you know, is based on the Decidim, which is an open source platform. Um, good thing about Decidim is not, it's not only Barcelona, the one who are using it, but it's almost a hundred of cities and public uh, institutions, such as the European Union right now, having this uh, future of Europe uh, debate. So as I said, uh, being in a public open source, uh, platform digital infrastructure. We're very happy because we can we can share it and we can improve it uh, as we as we all use it. And um, I would like to finish, and I won't get uh, and I'll, I'll be also talking fast on this issue because Isabella Longo is going to to give more details on our fight against digital divide. We all know uh, that uh, because of the of the lockdown, we are living like a kind of a um, digital life uh, that's been added to our real life. Uh, we, we're, we're moving now in, in two dimensions. So that means that all those who were uh, left behind uh, because they didn't have any access to internet, uh, mainly because of uh, economic uh, issues, those who didn't have the access to, to the proper equipment, we're talking about laptops, I mean, uh, an intelligent phone, a smartphone is not good enough. And especially all those who didn't have the skills, uh, didn't have the training to um, move themselves inside the, the internet and use the technologies, all the uh, adaption that is needed. So 
for so many technologies. Uh, we know we've seen that they've been uh, left behind, that they've been leave, left behind uh, on, on a on, on school uh, level, or at work level, at, at, at many other levels, based on, as I said, our new digital life. So this is something that we're fighting against, the, the digital divide. It's a new lay for, for the social exclusion. And if we want to make good that old idea or new idea about not leaving no one behind, uh, we need to, to put a lot of effort. We need to invest a lot of our resources. And I'm not talking only to guarantee the access to internet and the proper devices, but also to uh, go along with them, to, to, to help them. Uh, sometimes we're talking about upskilling or reskilling, but most of the time we're talking about really alphabetization on, on digital uh, skills. We're talking about people who hardly uh, know how to use WhatsApp or, or, or even turn on the computer. And as I said before, as we are living in not modern times, but digital times, we all need to have this kind, this minimum of, of skills in order to use all the, the, the good things that technology are, are bringing us uh, right now. So this is all from my side. Uh, I guess, Marjorie, now we can go in, in full detail of some of the projects and then we can keep on the discussion, if that's okay. Yep. Yes, and before we do that, we actually have a quick poll as well for everyone to participate in. So I'll just quickly launch that. And already, that should be up on your screens now. And already our discussion today has slightly touched on this topic. So we're interested to hear everyone's thoughts and feedback. But our first question is, has your city increased investment in digital infrastructure as a result of the pandemic? And so I think earlier we heard from Nico, but we would love to hear from other participants on the call. And the four response options are significant investment, some investment, our budget is roughly the same, and lastly, our budget has decreased. So I'll just give people about 30 more seconds to, to plug that in. And I should also add that this poll is anonymous, so feel free to be as honest as possible. Good to see that the poll is about the infrastructure and not about my presentation, uh, Tess. <laughs> well, Actually, when I heard that it was anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple more polls to go, Michael. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> oh, oh. Maybe you, you will have three different opinions from Barcelona in this poll. <laughs> <laughs> Well, perfect. I'll end the poll there because I think we've heard from the majority of participants. Yeah, so I will, uh, not, I will not answer. <laughs> and here we are. So we heard back from, it seems like three, so about 50, a little less than 50% have received both some investment or significant investment. So that's great. Or 50% receiving significant, 50% receiving some. And then only one participant has said that their budget is roughly the same. So that's great news. It seems like the vast majority of cities are receiving increased investment as a result of the pandemic. So that is a silver lining to a very challenging time. And with that, I'll pass it back to Barcelona. Uh, I think it was uh, Mark. Uh, Mark Pervalle is our responsible for digital rights. Uh, so, Mark, if you can please explain the yeah, sure. strategy. Thanks a lot, Mark. Thanks, Michael. So, um, yeah, I want just uh, to show you what we are doing regarding uh, ethical layout policies in Barcelona because it's is I think it it is one of the main you know hot topics that we we have been developing in this uh, this let's say pass uh, uh, 12 months. Uh, let me just ensure that you are looking, you, are, you can see my screen so far. So yes. I will try to put uh, the full screen. Um, oh, yeah. Shortcut. Cool. So, um, yeah, so, so I, I want just to present uh, uh, our um, government visual, which is more or less what uh, in Barcelona looks like a, a policy, local policy, and, and just to ensure that uh, all the government, the local government, uh, is just following the same direction, which is uh, a really important thinking, just in IT in general, rather to have different, you know, uh, areas of the of 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 the of the of the city council that are just doing things 
let's say, in different directions. So uh, we thought that uh, it was really, really crucial to, to you know, uh, ensuring that uh, IT and ethics are in the same page in order to ensure that every project that we've been developing using IT and for sure uh, ensuring AI, it's taking into account uh, the ethical aspects. This is one of the important, let's say more, most important things, but for sure this cannot be thought as an opposite thing uh, on the fostering of using AI in order to improve the, the public services because this is a, uh, really also a really, really, really crucial thing. So basically we need to foster AI because AI, it's, it, it can put, uh, let's say, it can be really disruptive when, when we think about how we can ensure that we can integrate uh, AI in, in, in implementing these public services. And then for sure, ensuring that uh, this kind of implementation of this integration of AI uh, algorithms have been, you know, uh, implemented taking into account uh, these ethical aspects that uh, uh, for sure we are we are taking into account. So this is the idea foster AI, but for sure take into account this kind of ethical aspects. So um, this is what we have in this kind of uh, government measures. So here we have a lot of text, but just to have you uh, this, this uh, summary, basically we have two different groups of objectives. Uh, in one hand, we have the city-oriented objectives, and for sure the city council-oriented objectives. So what we want to show to the citizens is in the first part, and then internally how we are going to organize in order to ensure that we are providing this or we are delivering this kind of services. So basically from the city oriented objective, what we have is this promotion of the digital transition in the city of Barcelona in general. So just having this kind of technologies uh, like AI that can ensure that we are providing better uh, public services. Uh, and for sure, um, ensuring that in this kind of, you know, creation of this, of this uh, technologies and these services, we are for sure including uh, the opinion and, 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 and citizens in general, in order to ensure that we have a positive social, social and societal impact. So this is one of this part of, that it's important, but for sure in the organization, uh, when we talk about AI, it's really, really important because um, AI, it's not only about uh, how we can ensure that we are providing better public services, just you know, in the first line, in the first front of, of, of services that are just dealing with citizens' uh, uh, problems uh, that we have in the city, but for sure, how we can internally organize and how we can ensure that uh, uh, citizens, uh, sorry, some public servants that are in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the city council can also provide the better or the best of, for, for them and just start to basically including this digital transformation in the city. Okay, so we have um, uh, these, two, these two different objectives that are really in parallel. And then we take into account also in order to develop this kind of, of government measure to ensure that we are in line about uh, all the frameworks that we have in, in Europe and also in the national regional framework. So we take into account uh, the white paper on AI, the fixed and guidelines for trustworthy AI, and for sure, uh, the AI national strategy and, and also uh, some lines, lines of work that the Catalonian government has, has just uh, thrown uh, uh, just in the, in the last in the last years. So what we have done with all this is that to ensure that we are have some guiding principles that are being applied on all our development of, of this kind of, of uh, integration of AI when we are developing and providing public services as an inter internal organization of the of the of, of the city council. So we we take this kind of um, human action and supervision, technical representation and security, for sure data privacy, which is also things that are really, really being developed a lot uh, with GDPR and local, local regulations that we have. Transparency is thing, I think that it's really, really important, uh, at least from personal city council perspective, for sure in, in you know, integrating the diversity, inclusion and equity, and basically, ensuring that what we are developing it's just aligned with social and environmental commitment and we are taking into account the mode quality control and, and, and accountability and responsibility which is i think one of the pillars main pillars of ethical development of ai that, that we need to take into account but these things are more or less uh, 
you know, well known in, in at least in the, in the European level. So um, we need to ensure that somehow we can, and this is our world, so how we can ensure that from our local perspective, we can just put value on these uh, guiding principles. And this is one of, you know, the main things that we have uh, been working about this, these last months, you know, to ensure that this is this makes sense to our citizens, this makes sense in the local perspective. And in order to, you know, with our limitations on, on, on competences that we have, it, just to ensure that uh, at this it can, these things can, can be done from, from our perspective. So basically, what we, we know from the Barcelona, from Barcelona perspective that we have a lot of algorithms. You have you have algorithms that are just, uh, for example, controlling the uh, cars that are entering the city in order to ensure that all the all cars cannot enter and if they are entered are banned. So uh, we we need to ensure that we we are developing lots of pilot projects that are really in they are really inner in each department and they are using uh, maybe a lot of AI. So we need to ensure that uh, this kind of projects are being some. So can not control but supervised in order to ensure that all of them are following the same line of work. So we are just having this kind of action that it's not only developing the the, the pilot projects, but also taking into account to, in order to have uh, this initial catalog of projects that are using AI in order to ensure what what we are doing because we are so big. So we cannot or we, it's really difficult to ensure. You know, which is the line of work if everybody is just doing different things. So these kind of uh, important actions that we need to do in the middle, uh, sorry, in the, in the initial part of the work in order to ensure that that we can we can uh, 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 have, let's say, a, a big a big picture of what we are doing. And then there's a lot of uh, there's another action that it's I think it's really important to take into account, which is um, so we we perform public procurement. So we are always procuring. So we need to ensure that we have this kind of standard clauses in order to ensure that um, um, all the procurement we are doing, taking into account that we can maybe, we can procure potential AI systems. They are procured in, in a way that it's following our standards. So the, the idea to, we, we have lots of examples in Barcelona in, with other perspective that we, we develop this kind of standard clauses in order to ensure that uh, um, uh, things are just procured in the same way that, and it's just being performed regardless if it's being uh, procured from uh, you know the social department or it's procured from uh, the economic department so this kind of standard clauses might they should be performed the same way in this kind of of, of beginning AI systems if you want to have this kind of line of work so this is another idea. The, the other idea that we, or the other action that we are developing so far is this definition of technical protocols and working methodologies that here we are just trying to ensure that we are applying the risk-based approach that uh, the European Commission and all these uh, uh, groups, uh, expert groups that are developing these kind of ideas, we try to just put, you know, uh, this kind of risk-based approach from the local perspective. And then for sure, and this is also really, really important, is the uh, training and communications. So I, I don't know how other cities are uh, working in, in, this, in this field, but uh, here in, in Barcelona, we have the IT department, which is a really internal department. So uh, our um, projects are just being uh, asked from other departments that are just you know, uh, in the front line. So we are just in the, in the second line. So for example, the social department just says, hey, uh, IT department, we need a new system that, you know, uh, provides uh, this kind of solution. So um, um, we need to ensure that this department that is asking uh, for a solution, they know that AI is there and ethical AI is there. So we are also developing some kind of actions that just perform this kind of, you know, dissemination uh, in order to ensure that uh, solutions that are maybe solved in the standard base, we can just use this kind of uh, AI in order to, to perform this kind of innovative solutions uh, also taking into account the ethical perspective. So these are more or less the, let's say, most important actions that we are 
or want to develop in the following years. And just to put in, in you know, in some projects that we have so far, um, and this is uh, this is not public so far, but I, I know that it's kind of just a private group. So uh, we are trying to to develop a, a new cap control capacity of pitches as we we perform uh, last year. Last year we performed uh, this kind of pitch capacity control using uh, the lampposts that are were situated, uh, you know, in 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 the in the in the in the yeah in the in the in the street. But now we are going to just mix uh, artificial intelligence with a drone, uh, drone uh, systems in order to have this kind of drone, which is a fixed wing aircraft, just with this uh, banner where we are going to put some, um, you know, messages that are just uh, ensuring that people just uh, are following the sanitary rules. And then the drone will have a camera and the camera we can uh, it, it can just uh, control the capacity of the of the people, or so the, the number of people that, that it's in the in the beach. So in this way, we can just not only just informing the people with messages, safety messages, not to to ensure they are, they are having safety distances and they are just putting the, the mask if it's needed, but also just controlling where uh, uh, crowds of people we are just putting in safe place for sure. Um, controlling, uh, as you can see in the image. So you can see that uh, all the faces are just just avoided. So we have this kind of, of, uh, of um, you know, anonymous uh, uh, processes that are being taken, the, well, the being proceeded in the, in the camera and in, in terms. So, so this is like the, the ideas we have here, the AI, we have here um, um, technical solutions that for sure they are going to be there. So we need to ensure that we, we are we are taking into account that that they are ethic, uh, ethically you know uh, uh, good and for sure we need to foster them because it's uh, from the efficiency the point of view it's perfect. The other thing uh, uh, so it's in Catalan because we have only the, the web in Catalan but the, the other the other one of the other projects that it's really really big is that just that, uh, yes, that the web page in order to uh, the people just needs to to make a complaint for in the city council just because we have three uh, here we have uh, uh, just is saying Yanabra which is just there's a tree that has fall so just people can put in the in just in plain text and the city the system is just providing uh, the solution so the classification where the citizens needs to just to point out so this is also a, a AI solution that we are improving and we are we are performing so far. So that's all from my side. Uh, I suppose it's happy to be interesting. And um, if you have any questions, I, I will be here. Great. And before we move on to the next presentation, we have another very brief poll. Um, so I will just launch that now. Uh, here we go. Um, and the question is, does your city differentiate between a digital services office and an IT office? And what we mean by that in broad strokes is an office that manages public facing digital products um, versus an internal IT function. And so, um, you know, we've heard a little bit about that from different, from different participants on today's call, but we would be interested to hear from everyone on the call. And I'll just give people about another 30 seconds to respond. Mark, I'll also just add that was a great presentation and I'm relieved um, that the faces are blurred on the um, beach monitoring. So we'll all be <laughs> a little more calm next holiday, next time we're relaxing on the beach in Barcelona, knowing that we're socially distanced, but that our privacy is also respected. So that's great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, and, the, yeah. and the beers are on Mark. So yeah. <laughs> well, now we're all coming. That's fantastic. <laughs> all right, perfect. Well, I think that's given people enough time for the poll. So I will close that and share the results with everyone. And it's interesting, if you can see the results, it's a, a bit of a mixed bag. Um, more people have one office that manage both of these functions. So 63% of respondents 
have an IT department that manages both internal IT operations as well as public facing digital pro um, products, while 38% uh, of people on the call have two separate offices. Very interesting. All right, with that, I'll pass it over to, I believe we have uh, um, Edward Martin next talking about 5G. Thank you so much, Tess. Uh, I want to, to agree all the people of Bloomberg and also Michael Donoso to show to let me the opportunity to 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 explain the 5G Barcelona initiative. I I will attempt to share my my screen. I have a little presentation. Don't worry, <laughs> little presentation about the the 5G Barcelona initiative. I am very happy. Um, uh, let me uh, present myself. I am Eduardo Martin. I am the CIO and. Uh, uh, 5G program director of Mobile World Capital. And I'm working together with Michael and Barcelona City Council uh, to 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 attempt to to convert Barcelona and, and also our country in one of the most powerful and um, 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 power uh, digital hub related to the 5G technology around the world, if it is possible, or, or around the Europe. Okay, uh, 5G Barcelona initiative. Uh, do you? Can, can you see the, the, the screen is correct yes. for you, the presentation? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, 5G Barcelona is a public private alliance prom promoted by uh, Barcelona City Council, uh, with the government of Catalonia, uh, two important uh, research centers in Catalonia, that is uh, IDOSCAT and CPTC, uh, the Polytechnical University of Catalonia, uh, a private, a corporation like Atos and, and also for mobile world capital. Now we have uh, more than uh, 60 uh, members of the this specific alliances that is a, a special example in Europe to develop and promote uh, the 5G technology and also in general the sorry and um, the intelligent networks. We are focused not only in 5G technology, that is a, one of the most important focus is not to, pro, to provide intelligent networks and, and the best connectivity for all the people in general in our country. Our vision is, uh, two years ago was the, the 5G technology is a decisive tool for the digitalization of the territories and the improvement of the people's quality of life. Now we are focused in the social aspect of the application and the excellent communication for all the people in, in our country because we are thinking that the good communication, the good uh, conditions to, to connectivity is, is a very useful tool to, to promote the, the best condition of quality of life for the people. Our mission is positioned in Barcelona and Catalonia as a global 5G digital hub in an innovative, open, neutral, and dynamic environment related to the local ecosystems of citizens and companies to leave a, a legacy in their territory. We are working with all the uh, carrier operators in, in Spain. We have uh, specific laws. Also, we are pro promoting the neutral infrastructures to promote the neutral uh, possibilities to connect to the 5G infrastructures. But also we are working with all the operators in, in our country to, to provide the best conditions. The main goals of the 5G Barcelona Initiative is uh, become a global reference in 5G technology. I think that Barcelona is now uh, good positioning in the ranking of the different cities related to the expanding uh, application of the 5G uh, technology in all the different verticals of our society. But we are working hard to, 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 to make the Barcelona one of the most principal cities in, in this area. We want to transformation of Catalonia um, in general in Barcelona into experimental 5G open structure. Uh, Michael said uh, uh, before that we are working and uh, that the Barcelona City Council is working in uh, a fantastic lab related to the 5G uh, technology uh, around the urban services. We are working together, Michael, to, 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 to get this objective as a reality because I think that it's very important for the city to have this lab, this specific lab, uh, and, and develop these urban services over the 5G technology. We want to promote the 5G technology at the different cases of use around it. Uh, we, we are uh, 
We want to impact on economics, talent, and civil society. We want to generate business opportunities, especially we are uh, oriented to create a specific ecosystems to develop new, new companies, startups, and new local ecosystem related to digital solutions over 5G technologies and intelligent networks. And we want to accelerate the deployment of 5G structures. In fact, in, in Barcelona, we have, uh, we are very lucky because we have, now we have a, a 5G coverage from two operators, uh, from three operators, from three commercial operators, but, but we want to explore and develop new 5G solutions and new ways to uh, to provide this uh, coverage uh, in the city. Uh, our activities are centered in five uh, specific areas. Uh, we are promoting use cases and concept, and concept proofs uh, for different reasons to identify new use cases that are very important for the 5G technology um, expansion. We are working with different areas. Specifically, we are working with the social area, with mobility, with e-health solutions, and also with smart city solutions, of course. We want to configure new products and services. We want to develop new and innovative devices. Uh, we think that uh, the promotion of new innovative devices are is a, um, is a good new business for, for, for the cities. Also, we are developing different labs. Uh, Michael uh, uh, says that we are working in a specific lab, but now we have different labs in Barcelona that a lab is an area with uh, excellent 5G coverage from different operators or from different sources, but we are working to a specific of these labs oriented to a specific vertical. For example, we have a lab oriented to uh, little companies. We have a, a lab oriented to railway, to railway solutions. We have a lab oriented to health solutions. We are promoting these labs from a specific research uh, labs with the collaboration of uh, the universities or the research centers, or also we have and a specific lab oriented to the IoT solutions, like the things with Telefonica. We have a different types of labs, different spaces uh, oriented to the promotion of the city uh, as a big living lab to test and develop new uh, use cases over 5G and uh, intelligent networks. We are promoting a specific uh, activity that uh, I love, it, that is uh, the workshops, workshops with different entities, different, different companies, with administrations to develop uh, the knowledge of, the of about 5G technology and also develop new use cases. Uh, some, sometimes we need the collaboration, this is a, task, a collaborative task with the uh, so, uh, social uh, uh, actors, to promote and to discover different use cases that uh, where the 5G technology are, are the same. Uh, now we are very, very happy with, with this activity. Also, we, we are uh, making roadshows, a lot of conference around the world. Uh, the pandemic uh, stopped this activity, but now we, are, we, we will start this, this activity because we want to uh, to put in value the, the, the task of Barcelona around the world related to the development of this technology. Also, we offer training, training in all the levels uh, with the collaboration of the Polytechnic University of Catalonia related to the 5G technology and uh, new services. Our basic activity in the last two years, uh, I think that this uh, is very high, but uh, we, we, we develop more than uh, 16 uh, use cases relate, uh, around different verticals, 21 labs, uh, development of 21 labs in the city of Barcelona, more than 14 workshops with different entities and different companies, more 100 conferences around the Europe of the world, uh, talking about the possibilities of Barcelona, our cover for uh, 50 workshops uh, and uh, 50 opportunities of, of, of trainings. Uh, I put a uh, show specifically this, the existing experience of use cases, but uh, if you want, I, 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 I can send you this presentation because if not, this is very long. I'm very pro um, specific uh, uh, of this initiative 
develop it with uh, Barcelona City Council, Michael, okay, related to the use of the just social use of the 5G technology, improving uh, the elderly qualities of life. We have two projects related to to this to this area, this social area. I'm very proud of this project, specifically uh, about uh, the 5G emotional robot. I think, Michael, this is good for Barcelona to show the world this robot because it's an emotional robot that are improving the quality of life of the elderly. Uh, now we have three robots with uh, six uh, old people in the, their homes that are pro uh, providing an special, uh, an special um, uh, conditions of life of, of, of these people. Uh, we are promoting the, the continuity of, of this pilot, but I think that connect the robots using artificial intelligence to provide uh, knowledge for the robot to, to, to make uh, a happy life for these people is very good for Barcelona. I think that is one of the most special, uh, special projects for us. I am very proud to collaborate with uh, uh, Barcelona City Council in, in this project. Michael, this is very good for us and thank you so much for your support uh, to, to develop this, this project. If you want, I, I, I can send uh, this presentation and if you want, you can, uh, you can make all the questions that you that you have related to this initiative. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Edward, and especially considering that you are in the middle of the organization of the mobile, which yes. takes place in a couple of, of two weeks at the end of June. So you are living rough times at the minute. Uh, <laughs> Thanks a lot. But it's it is a pleasure. Thank you so much, Michael. It's very pleasure for me to participate in, in this. And do you remember I am I was working in the Barcelona City Council a lot of years ago and I'm very proud to participate in this meeting. Thank you so much. Right. Well, we have one more quick poll before we move to the last presentation from Barcelona. And so I will launch that now, and you should be able to see that up on your screens. But the final question is, what are compelling areas for city to city collaborations? And the different options are COVID recovery, open source, data, digital inclusion, and lastly, cyber security. And and if there's any additional ideas that you think would be a compelling or fruitful area for cities to collaborate on, feel free to put your suggestions also into the chat. So I'll just give you about 30 seconds since we're running a little short on time. I thought it was multi-choice. <laughs> oh, I, that's a good question actually. Yeah. It's oh. not. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, so you've got to be very selective. I'm so sorry. So you're number one, and then feel free to you can feel free to send us an email. And yeah. as we mentioned, we'll we'll send out um an email following up from this meeting to put in place um a workshop in September. And hopefully we can get started on some of these ideas that people suggest today. All right, it looks like everyone has responded. So I will close that poll and share the results. And data is the number one most responded to area. So that received 33%, followed in equal place by open source and cybersecurity. And then the last responses were tied with COVID recovery and digital inclusion. So David, um, data was the winner there that was very interesting. All right, and I'll pass it back to Barcelona now for the final presentation on the digital divide. Thank you, Tess. Um, thank you, everybody, for inviting the uh, City of Barcelona to present these uh, experience and uh, practices and policies. I would also like to share a, a couple of slides, if you don't mind. Can you see this slide? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, so 
uh, this is, by the way, I would like to take the chance that uh, both Eduardo and uh, Michael talk about this uh, Urban Innovation Center. This is the Urban Innovation Center well, where you will find uh, the um, 5G lab in the future. So we will be very glad to invite you to come to visit us uh, as soon as it will be possible. Um, regarding the digital divide, so we... Um, well, uh, before setting up, uh, before setting up uh, uh, a digital inclusion plan, we needed to see the big picture of the situation first. So we did the report called the Digital Divide uh, uh, in the city of Barcelona. Based on the survey we carried out uh, in the fall 2020 at the end of the first lockdown, among the up to 2,500 citizens to analyze the digital divide in the city and uh, the impact of the pandemic and the use of information and communication technologies. I would like to underline a few highlights regarding the access to ICTs. So what we saw is that 91.5.9, that is 92% of households, has an internet connection. Only 1% of those surveyed do not have internet access for, the, for economic reason. The narrowing of the digital divide has shed light on pre-existing factors that continue to, con to, to condition the type of access and use of technology. These factors are age, gender, employment condition, and level of education. When it comes to the use of ICTs, we can underline that compared with the peer review survey that has been run uh, like five years ago, the internet users that have seen the greatest increase as are training courses, courses which have tripled in popularity, medical appointment and consultation, which have doubled, e-government procedure, video and voice call, as you can see in this number, and, it, and it's uh, quite obvious because of we are in this situation as well, purchase and sale of Google and service. So this is quite a, 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 quite an obvious results, but we really need to have a clear number in order to design the digital divide, digital inclusion plan. So finally, we got some results about how pandemic affected the use of ICTs. Uh, the use of ICTs has grown in such a recent more, month for 62% of, popul uh, of population as a result of the COVID-19 health crisis. Remote working, online education, and e-government procedure are at the heart of this increase, which is slightly more pronounced in a high income area than in a low income area. So you can see that remote working become widespread during the lockdown. Some, uh, almost 60% of employed people were able to work remotely during this period. Uh, uh, from the results of the survey. Remote learning was made possible to a great extent by ACTs. With regard to children at school, 73% were able to continue with their study online during the lockdown. So this is the number with, with, with a few highlights of the result of the survey that helped us to design uh, the digital inclusion plan that we actually are, are designing with um, Michael Donalds and actually, uh, and and uh, we are uh, running few projects in the framework of this biggest plan, and we'd like to explain you like a couple of free uh, of free project that we are actually running. We started this project during the pandemic because of the urgency and the moment asked to run this project, but uh, and uh, and actually uh, seeing this situation, we are seeing that is need to keep on working in this direction. So the first one, uh, to tackle the digital divide, we are designing this digital inclusion plan that includes this uh, ICT's agent plan. We hired and trained a group of people called the ICT's agent who help citizens who need technical support and digital knowledge for making online procedures like obtaining subsidies or tax exemption. These agents are physically work in the lower middle class neighborhood, uh, the low income area, in the network of, of public facilities called the Socioeconomic Response Network, Office of the Public Administration to manage administrative formalities. 
So we are this agent for giving support to the public administration first in the moment of lockdown, in which people cannot go to the office, to the to this uh, to this uh, public administration office. But the, in this way, th this is, was a big opportunity for us to give it to the community the tools and the knowledge for doing online procedure by themselves by themselves in the future. So it is like a kind of tool to support the e-governments to make it wider and to make it make it accessible for a wider part of the population. So another plan I would like to shortly talk about is the zero digital divide pilot project. So we start with the pilot project stay in the pilot project stage, selecting a group of people who has no access to ITC because of cannot afford it. That is uh, this 1% of population that we see in the survey before. So first of all, uh, the idea was to guarantee the access to the network, set up a broadband internet connection for those users who do not have it. Secondly, to distribute laptop or devices to the families and people of low income communities, always in this focus group. And the last but not least, support those family with digital training program and education, together with this uh, ICT's agent we talked about uh, before. So this is a pilot project, but uh, the idea is uh, to keep on uh, evaluating and see the output and results of this digital training in order to design a specific training program according to the profile of this user and make the pilot project bigger, make a plan of a, make it like bigger in order to track this digital divide to the biggest city. So another 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 example of a project that we are running from in the in the framework of a digital inclusion plan is a for Alex approach to tackle the digital divide. The idea is uh, to put together all the stakeholder of the city from the private public sector, the uh, academy, universities, and the citizens as well, in order to put together all the project efforts, knowledge regarding the uh, digital inclusion and see if there's, first of all, mapping, mapping all the initiative, find synergies and match supply and demand in order, to, in order to see if we can run a project together as a city, not all the, only with a with a as a government, with a with a um, not only top down approach, but together with a bottom up approach, and uh, uh, to face this uh, like a uh, big issue, big uh, big uh, big mission uh, together with all the stakeholders that uh, work in the field of uh, digital transformation in the city. So these uh, four projects um, start uh, in the in the moment of pandemic, but the idea is to make them bigger in order to manage in the in the as big way as possible the digital divide. Uh, thank you. And uh, if you have any question. And Michael, perhaps we can pass it back to you just in case we're, I'm conscious we've got five minutes left, but if anyone has any questions for Michael and the rest of the Barcelona team, um, this is your opportunity. I've already seen some great questions being asked in the chat. Um, perhaps Michael, you might want to elaborate a little bit more on some of those, or if anyone else wants to jump in with any other questions for the three presentations. Yeah, whatever. Uh, there was a question. Well, I, I've already answered in the chat, uh, but it uh, was, I think, was talking how do we find, how do we spot uh, people needing digital support? Uh, we are basically, it's what uh, Isabella was talking about. We have deployed these agents, ICD agents, uh, along the, the, the neighborhoods that they are more affected 
uh, by the digital divide, which are the same neighborhoods that they are more economic uh, and social uh, excluded, and the other ones who are who need more this um, help and and on also all the all the public uh, services and all the subsides and all the economic. Uh, um, grants. So we're doing this along with our social uh, so service uh, social department and, and based on the territory, based on, on, on where the people need their, their help. So instead of waiting for them to come, we are already there. And as I said, uh, we, we through our social services uh, resources, we detect uh, who needs this kind of help. Yeah, if, if I may, uh, just, just to add something in that, uh, in what was Jamie what was 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 asking for. So we we've got uh, so so regarding the five G deployment and how we can just collaborate between you know private sector when deploying um, uh, digital infrastructure. Just five G is just an excuse that we have now. So in the table, but it is always having been the same. So uh, it's important to, to ensure that we are restricting this kind of collaboration between, between the private sector in order to ensure that when they are deploying in public space, they are doing the things in, you know, in a way that it can be more or less uh, fair for both sides. So from the, you know, from, from them ensuring that we are, that the, the telecommunication deployment is arriving to everyone, but also uh, taking into account, uh, you know, specific aspects when deploying in public space, like things are just ordered, secure and safe enough. So uh, we, we, we started uh, uh, just, uh, we, we gained a lot of experience in internal collaboration, which is also really important between the, the um, public space department and also the IT department when we deployed uh, the public Wi-Fi uh, in, 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 Barcelona, in the Barcelona city. And because we need to just to put something, not a device in, you know, in the lamppost. And then <laughs> just the public infrastructure department said, oh, what you're doing, why you have to put this in my lamppost? But this is something that is going to be a public service for the, for the citizens. So we started just to, you know, discuss, argue, fight, let's say, between departments in order to ensure that, that things are, are being done in, you know, taking into account the different specificities of each department. So we get a lot of experience on that. And then when we have this kind of neo deployments, like small cells in, 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 in public furniture, in, you know, in, in, in the streets, uh, we are prepared just to put uh, now a private, uh, just a private role in, in this kind of negotiations, because you have, you know, you, you want to have 5G in all the city, this, we are all, all agree on that. <laughs> But we want to do this kind of deployments that came into account that uh, they are safe and for sure ordered. So uh, we are just using some public uh, uh, funds that we found from from the from the national government in order to to try to put uh, to perform this kind of pilot projects to ensure that these kind of deployments are performing the way that they should be performed. So we just say, okay, you can try to deploy 5G in this street just to your application no? with a uh, cell Max or Vodafone or, or whatever uh, uh, company, the communication company we have, but you are going to deploy in my lamppost. <laughs> so just not with, uh, you know, not with something that it's just provisional. No, no, you are going to put there and we're going to argue a lot of how you have to put there in order to ensure that we deploy a standard on this kind of deployments and then we can agree with that. And then we can just try to replicate not only in Barcelona, but also in other cities, in our case, Spanish cities. But I think it can be extended a lot on just European cities because, you know, the, the, I think the problem is the same regardless in which country we are. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we'd be really keen to maybe share some of our experiences with, with you guys in Barcelona. Um, I think we're all trying to figure this out and uh, maybe the internal challenges sometimes can be bigger than the external challenges. <laughs> yeah, definitely true. Uh, Michael, I think, I think, I, sorry, I, I think that is uh, one of the principal keys is, is, is a challenge for all of us in the next years to, to get uh, 
a specific regulation, perhaps the European regulation to deploy correctly the infrastructures because uh, we will have a development of a 5G to, to 6G and two other technologies that will need uh, a specific regulation and a public intervention in the, in the, in the streets. Because if not, it's, it's possible to deploy all, all, all the different infrastructure for the different operators. We, we will need to regulate uh, in a European level, as is my point of view, this, this, uh, this aspect of the, of the infrastructure. Michael, is it an idea to share the contact details of Mark, uh, Eduard and Isabella um, in combination yeah. with the presentation so that our people can hook up with, with them? Yeah, if absolutely. Specific I, questions. Yeah, Mark and Isabella, if you can send me the presentation. So I already have uh, Eduard, so I'll pass it to Luna and Tess and, yeah. and Todd. And, and I think you all have our emails, I'd say, uh, or if not, I'll send the, the emails as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah, if you want some specific, uh, just information about the details on on how to deploy, uh, yeah, it's in public space. We can, I think it, the, the best way is just to connect, you know, the specific teams that are in charge of that. So yeah. in, in every city, I think it's really important to have, maybe it's not a European regulation that it will become just really after that, uh, you know, some good practices. Just good practices uh, in order that we can agree not only in between cities but also with with operators. I think this is uh, yeah. the point. Yeah. yeah, I'll send the presentations, and if anyone needs a spare screen, computer screen, I guess Mark can also help you with that, as he has got a lot of them in the background. <laughs> Any final questions before we wrap up? No? Uh, Michael, Mark, uh, Edward, and Isabel, uh, thanks a lot for the great presentations. I think in a very short time, you got a very good overview and a mixed overview of what Barcelona is doing on the field. And uh, I'm pretty sure that a lot of us are, are uh, having extra meetings after this one uh, to, to get more in details on specifics and share knowledge on uh, the, the different uh, parts of the presentations. So thanks a lot and, uh, and yeah, great uh, to get this insight from you guys. Thank uh, you. But that's Thank the wrap up as well for today. So uh, thanks a lot for, for everybody uh, attending. And uh, like Todd was mentioning, we're, we're going to have an, uh, an extra session in September to, to see if through a workshop we can combine different initiatives from the different cities uh, together. So thanks a lot. Uh, good to see you. Have a great summer and see you back in September. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye.